Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. I want to welcome you guys to Storybook JS for React developers. Okay. So this is actually going to be a video for YouTube and also the introduction to this course to basically break down what exactly is Storybook JS. Now let's get into it, right? If you guys have never heard of this, Storybook JS is a framework that basically is helping companies uh, create react components in an isolated environment and also allow for people to see the components as if it was in, inside of a documentation. Okay. That's like the simplest way to really explain this. Now, just like how it says on the website, it says storybook is an open source tool for building UI components and pages in isolation. It streamlines UI development, testing and documentation. Now, Storybook has become very, very popular. A lot of big companies are using it. Uh, you will see that uh, there's websites like BBC, The Guardian, right? You have companies like Salesforce, IBM, Shopify, Airbnb, Wix, um, GitLab, right? I'm trying to give you guys some of the companies that you probably have heard of, uh, Audi, right? So pretty much a lot of companies are using Storybook. Now, how can you use this, right? And why should you care? Why should you even pay attention to try to learn this thing? I'm gonna give you guys the problem and why Storybook is the solution. So let's break it down like this. Let's say you are uh, Shopify, right? And let's say you wanna keep the same style guideline that you have throughout your whole application. So for example, you want to have the same type of buttons. You want to have the same type of drop downs, right? You want to have components that you can reuse throughout your whole website. All right. And you also want to provide documentation and examples on how to use those components. So this is where something like storybook comes in because it allows you to do that. So let me show you guys right here an example for Shopify's Polaris. So this is like a, a style guide that Shopify has for their applications and they recommend for third party developers who are going to create applications within their platform to also use the Shopify Polaris style guideline. Okay. Now let's say we wanted to create a button, right? We could create a, a button component. Okay. But this component, which is a button can be used in multiple ways. So for example, you have things like a uh, simple basic button, which is this one. Then you have the outline button. Then you have the online monochrome button which shows basically uh, how this thing works. Okay. Uh, you also have plain button. Okay. You also have plain monochrome button it says, can I retrieve the data? Try again. Okay. Primary button. And this primary button is the exact same button that we're seeing right here. Okay. Now, again, you can pass in different properties to this button and this button is going to render itself to all of those different situations. Like I said, there's an outline, there's a primary, there's a whole bunch of different uh, styles and, and ways that one button component can look like. Okay. And this is super powerful. So I give you guys an example, like right now, this is how Polaris looks right now in 2021. Right. But let's say a year from now, two years from now, Shopify decides, Hey, we're going to redo the whole website. We want to change the styles. We want to make it more modern because they've been using Polaris for a few years now. So let's say they want to go and revamp the whole website. They don't have to rewrite all of the components. All they have to do is basically go in and change the components that are already there throughout the whole website and change the styles for it or change, like, let's say extra features that they might want to add to, to this components. Okay. Uh, without having to go and, and recreate new components, they could just add those extra features to the components that are already existing throughout the whole website. So like that, they don't have to rewrite everything. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense for you guys. This is super powerful, especially when you're working at a company where there might be, I don't know, a thousand developers or even 500 developers or however big Shopify is, right? Uh, they could reuse this components and the person doesn't have to be like an expert in design because there's a guy that already built the style guide and basically you're following the style guide that's there. 
you could just go in and say, Hey, I want to create a page and I need to have a button and I need to have an input field. I need to have a title. I need to have a page to look like this. All of that is here. Okay. It's already there with storybook. It's already having it uh, for the person here, like a documentation. If I'm a brand new developer getting hired at Shopify, I barely have to ask any questions. Everything is already there for me. I can see all of the components. If I say, Hey, you know what? I want to create a modal. I click on modal. I see the examples of, of the modals, the different type of ways that I could use this modal component. And I can see all of this. Okay. And you could also connect to database or mock database, right? And also test your components within this platform. Let's take a look how BBC actually uses this. They basically have components for almost everything that's on their website. Okay. So let's say for this one, which is the brand, this is the header. Okay. This is the header. This is what they have a brand with link. Okay. They call it a brand with link, right? Brand to the right. All right. Uh, you got your bulletins, TV bulletins, radio bulletin. All right. Uh, coming here, let's say a uh, heading, right? Headline dark mode, how it will look on dark mode, how it will look for default. I will look on dark mode. So all of this are examples of things that, that they have on their website. Let's say in here, canonical navigation, right? And I could see the documentation for each component and we can see the arguments. We can see all of the things that it actually uh, takes. Is it open? Is it open class, uh, brand foreground navigation UI? Okay. Navigation alive. So, all of the things that has to do with this component, it's there. And anybody that's coming in and that's learning uh, to know the process of the company, a documentation has already been created for you just by going in and using storybook and connecting, you know, the different things that you have to connect using storybook to your component. But pretty much it creates like a documentation and examples that you can use. All right. This is super big for big companies. Like when, once you get to a certain point, you want to go in and create components out of everything. For example, if there's a slider, why would you go and create 10 different sliders when you could create one slider that has multiple features? Okay. Now let's talk about what is this going to do for you that you are looking for a job as a react developer or you're looking for a job as a, any type of developer, front end, back end, right? This is going to open doors for you. Okay. This is going to give you a leg up above everybody else. Everybody else that you're going to see here on YouTube, here on online courses, on boot camps, uh, college, they all can program, they all can code. But what makes somebody different and stand out is actually being able to use tools that's being used in production. Okay. There's certain things that makes a person raise their eyebrows and say, Hmm, this person knows about storybook, but you've never had a job before. How do you know about this? Well, I prepare myself. I'm ready. Okay. This is what really makes you stand out and, and shows to people. Oh, okay. This guy, he could play with the big boys. Okay. Same thing as testing. When you go into a company and you say, yeah, I basically test all my components and I'm using storybook to, uh, show, uh, how my components work and also to, to test them and, and keep them scoped into, uh, this area. So it doesn't affect throughout the website, etc. Right? Like, People look at that and say, Hmm, this guy's ready for the prime time. He's ready to work in this type of companies. So this is small things, but it actually makes you stand out because nobody else is really learning this. Okay. This is stuff that you learn on the job. This is stuff that you learn once you have a year, two years in by learning this before you even get into the game, it shows how prepared you are. It shows what level you're at compared to everybody else. Okay. You don't want to be that guy with a, a little to do app on your portfolio. You want to go in and actually show all of the skills that you have and say, Hey, I could play with the big boys. Put me in coach. Okay. Now, again, a lot of the companies that are using this, if you look at, at the type of jobs that they have, they're paying a lot of good money. Okay. This is Honeywell. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of Honeywell. This is in Atlanta. Okay. They're using react native. They also use in storybook. Okay. You go down here and Okay. 120 to $170,000.
this is what makes the difference okay this is what's gonna make you stand out compared to everybody else that's just gonna show up with a to do app and like hi guys i got a master's from udemy or something like that okay they've t <laughs> they've taken twenty thousand, you know uh, tutorials but don't really know anything that could really take them you know uh, ahead of everybody okay lowe's oracle right this is what i'm trying to tell you guys this is what you need to do to really stand out it's like you want to have as much skills as possible but targeted skills skills that's going to make you stand out is going to say okay this person can work with us this person can play with the big boys okay um because at the end of the day believe it or not nobody wants to train anybody right somebody might say well i'd rather pay somebody a hundred and twenty thousand dollars to not have to train them. I don't want this person to come in and spend the next two months, three months just sucking on their thumb and just getting ready to become uh, the type of developer that we need. We need somebody to come here and hit the ground running. But if you can go in and provide and show that, hey, I know the majority of the things that you want me to do, that's going to always put you ahead of everybody else that can just do a for loop. Okay. So anyways, man, hopefully you guys are excited to learn this. We are starting this course right now. And yeah, man, just come in. You already know it's codingphase.com. We're going for the React Developer Career Path. Okay. Uh, we already finished a, a lot of the projects in here. The React.js build a streaming service. Okay. In this course, we're actually going to be using a lot of the components that we did here in the React build a streaming service uh, application. Let me see if I show you guys this for those of you guys that maybe don't know what i'm talking about uh so basically this is a hbo max uh clone and we're going to be converting a lot of these things into its own isolated components for having its own stories okay we're going to organize our story like a, a proper documentation of all of our components okay you have things like uh, the thumbnails you have the account section you have the input field right uh like this one you have uh things like this like the side navigation you have other components like the genre components which is this one okay so a lot of these things we're going to convert them uh using stories and put into its own storybook so like that you can go and demonstrate to people that yeah i went in and built this whole application but i also have my own storybook for all of the components if you want to take your time to look at what we did okay so it's actually pretty cool okay i can't wait until we get started and i'll see you guys in the next video take care guys